Yeah. I consider this <laughs> hot. Um, and that went out to the internet. <laughs> yeah, probably probably. Did. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hopefully Welcome back, we are everyone. live. Today only two. So the E3. That's a weird phrasing. Are you tired? Day only two. We're all tired. There's another one tomorrow. Oh, don't. Okay, so it's the penultimate day of E3. It is. Welcome to our penultimate live stream. Yeah. Let us Tomorrow's know how we're gonna be and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know how we sound, how we look. Tomorrow's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be the last Q and A type live stream today. Yes. Yeah. Tomorrow Luke and Ellen are going to be playing an actual G Dam video game. Yeah. Mm. So drink it in. Live. Drink so, in. Yeah, the, the, the splendour the of room. Of Mike's hotel, hotel room. room. Yeah, well, I exactly. Finally, I can fling my pants all over the place after tonight. Have we pr pr previously revealed this was your hotel room? No. Well, this now is my you hotel know. Room. Revelations. This is yeah. where I, I sleep over there. I do my bathroom business over there. <laughs> wow. It's yeah. all, letting it all hang out now that E3 is nearly over. Yeah, exactly. Let me tell you, it's room number seven. <laughs> <laughs> one eight. Yeah. Oh, no. And um, yes, we've had a wonderful day, though, right? I've had one. a really good Yeah, you day. say it's the penultimate day, but really I feel like it was the ultimate, ultimate day. day at E3. Yes. Because we saw Cyberpunk. Yes. We saw Control. Yes. And you guys saw Vampire, Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines. The Masquerade two. Bloodlines. Two. two. Yeah. Two. Quite the... Quite the trio. Also, I saw I saw Journey to the Savage Planet as well, which oh, is yeah. I don't forget about that, Andy. How how could you? How could you? Certainly a game. Uh, so uh, yeah, let us know how you're getting on, um, and if there's anything you'd like to know about those games. Yeah, um, we saw or in general, anything about E3. Yeah. Life tips. We played about 40 minutes of Control. We saw a 50 minute Cyberpunk demo. And how long were you guys playing Vampire for? Uh, about it was like half an hour. Yeah. Ish, so. We were sort of steering someone else yes. who was playing. Someone, someone who was good at the combat. They didn't yeah. trust you. No, well, they, 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 they no, trusted they, us they more don't than they trust probably anyone right now, but they did let us make all the important decisions, which, which were. Was a terrible so how did you play? A terrible were you a nice, asshole. A nice, or not? helpful vampire. No, we were a terrible, terrible asshole. asshole. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there, were, there were no seduction options in this particular demo, which uh, meant Mike's natural play hard. style was somewhat hampered. Yes. One I got. I think they're saving the seduction thing for like a separate reveal. Probably they're like Ooh. finally they'll be like they'll be all the, the seduction options. demo. <laughs> yeah, because they know if they if they put it in the E3 demo, that's yeah. all anyone would talk exactly. or write or think yeah. about. So yeah, I think probably that's fair. smart. But we saw a lot more Keanu Reeves, meanwhile, speaking oh, yeah. of seduction <laughs> in Cyberpunk 2077. I know I was seduced. So it was a, a an extended. A sort of presentation yeah. of, uh, of a, a mission in which we learned about the, the actual nature of, of the Keanu Reeves character mm -hmm. in, in the game and also a bit about the a nature bit of, of a mission. The character. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that then? Yeah, let's start with Cyberpunk. I think it was the first one in this live stream yeah. title. Okay, first so. of all, summarize okay. your thoughts in just t two sentences. Keanu Reeves is good mm -hmm. and I like him. Are those two, are two sentences? Full stop at the end of good. And then right. a capital I land. At yeah. emphasis. Okay. Mike, um, care to weigh in with your two sentences? Uh, it still looks great, I still think, looks in great. this one. Yes. And also, Keanu yeah. Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> but all, all one word. Yeah. Um, right. How about you? Uh, it was blooming spectacular. Mm. And also Keanu Reeves <laughs> <It's good. laughs> was in it. Yeah. And, yes. and he's good. And that, that's one just long sentence. Let's talk a bit about Keanu Reeves' role. Because I don't okay. think we've discussed this on stream. He no. plays Johnny Silverhand. Yes. Who is a Winter Soldier type. Yeah. Winter Soldier cyborg. looking. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is actually a digital ghost who lives mm. in your head. He's like a yeah. Tyler Durden type. You, you yeah. suggest you know, he is not romanceable. I'm terribly sorry to disappoint everyone. It depends how hard you're trying. <laughs> <laughs> you to quote Andy, it's, yeah. it depends if you're trying hard enough. Yeah. You know in The Simpsons where they make that joke about um, uh, running out of ideas and they're like, they have a little alien character that only Homer can see and hear. Yeah. That's what Keanu Reeves is. He's like a digital ghost that only you can see and hear. Yeah. And well, because he's of... housed in like a a chip yeah. that mm -hmm. you have, and uh, and it's embedded in It's your the neck. the sort of virtual representation, the digital ghost of an actual character mm -hmm. in that game world. Mm. And so I, I think what's interesting is it'll be the the sort of sci-fi speculation: is this a program? Is it a simulation? Or is it actually? The consciousness of a formerly living person yeah. somehow housed in uh, an inorganic sort of piece of um, right. hardware. Because yeah. uh, one of the characters that's mentioned quite a lot in the demo that we saw was Alt Cunningham, mm -hmm. and in the, um, the first person to digitally upload their consciousness. Yeah. Exactly. Fifty yeah. years ago, so she's been living inside the the net basically for fifty years, mm. and she's the former girlfriend of Johnny Silverhand. So they've clearly 
there's a connection between those two guys, and I'm sure you'll uncover mm. more of that as the mm. story goes on. But the other quite interesting thing was we saw a new district of Night City, which was Pacifica, Pacifica yeah. right? Um, which is a bit more sort of, it's kind of like a, it was originally designed to be like a really luxury kind of resort and by the beach. Seafront property, and yeah. And then uh, the economy crashed and all the investors pulled out and it just became this sort of derelict... Yeah. And we had a favourite moment, didn't we, of uh, the demo, which was that as you sort of walked into Pacifica, there was like an Apache gunship <laughs> just, just absolutely strafing, strafing like a, a floor balcony. of this like, yeah. uh, skyscraper. It was bizarre. Com- but completely unrelated to what yeah. you're yeah. up to. The camera just panned it. across. You can <laughs> see it in the corner, yeah. just like wrecking you're, someone. You're having this like... conversation with the character distracting oh. me up in the corner. There's this helicopter just going... <laughs> So that was pretty interesting. Just having its own adventure. But it had a very, a very different vibe, I thought, um, from the stuff we've seen previously, which was all kind of Blade Runner y and like neon and everything stacked up on top of each other. It was a much more open environment, much more like recognizable, mm. run down sort of area of the city, but just with big sort of tower blocks mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. The, the, the sort of sci fi was quite light touch in the demo. Until right at the Until end. Until right at the end, yeah. yeah. It's a much more down to earth region and I think it was a smart choice because we've we've all seen and had a lot of Blade Runner of late. Mm. And I think you need to show something different than kind of that warmed over neon. Which it does extremely well, but it's almost a cliche. Yeah. yeah. Almost, I mean and, and again it did it spectacularly well, but I think you need to advance that, you know, mm. show that you, you've got more than just like the most mm. beautiful Blade Runner simulator. You know? The way they were playing the demo, they were sort of switching back and forth between two different character builds. There yeah. was a, uh, no, <laughs> there was a... And uh, he's expecting an important call. No, I'm keeping an eye on the regular chat. Okay, okay. so I will do that as well. Um, uh, so I've lost my train of thought now. Uh, the way they were playing the demo was switching between yes. the back and forth, like timing wise, right? Yeah, so they had someone who was set up as a kind of strength build with like a lot of guns, mm-hmm. and then they had someone who was much more of a net runner, yeah, uh, like a hacker build. Uh, so it really reminded me of Deus Ex in the way that mm. um, it was like they spec'd out one character for combat and they spec'd out another character for hacking. But it was like the strength and uh, combat character basically blew through the whole bit in about yeah. ten seconds, like wrenched open yeah. a couple of doors and was, and that was it. in the, the location yeah. that it had taken the net runner about 10 minutes yeah this nerd through. was like hacking his way <laughs> through all this stuff there was some extremely cool hacks that they mm. did because everything is like linked to computers in this uh, in this world so there was a bit where one of the um the bad guys was training boxing with a robot and they hacked yeah. the robot to just like punch it's like a rock and sock and robot yeah. and it really rocked and socked yeah. that guy's head and clean off there's another guy like bench pressing yeah. with like these weights that were um you could alter the weights digitally and he just like jack the weight up to maximum yeah. and just crush this guy I think that's, there's a moral there which it's a is bad idea. it's this an is, unnecessary automation this is where the yeah. internet of what do they call it the internet of objects internet 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 of things. things. Yeah. that's where the internet of things is going to get us like <laughs> I have a remotely controlled central heating yeah. in my home just cook you. yeah if, if a net runner wanted yeah. to just get like cook nest. me alive they yeah. could just get in there and, and, and turn, turn my the heating up. all the way up at the very least they could break my boiler and who needs that oh, <laughs> that's that's the nightmare we're sleepwalking into people always does it before Christmas as well, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Nightmare. Um, should we have a look at some comments? Yeah, okay. for sure. Angel Beat says, thanks for your hard work with E3, Bloodlines 2 and Control for the win. Yeah. Uh, non Non Blur is a new member. Tyler Letourneau uh, donates, thank you very much. Uh, Carl Obsidian says, forget all this video game nonsense. Tell us about the tasty things you've eaten on this trip. Well. Did you see Instagram where mm. Mike was eating a maple bacon donut? That was yeah. a tasty thing. It was a very was good. Yeah. Did you have were you just like off your off your head on trigger all afternoon? Pretty much, like, yeah, it was yeah. buzzing. Fly, absolutely fly, hovering about three inches above the ground, yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, this mm. power of maple bacon. Maple bacon donut yeah. was really good. We had some really good chicken from a food truck. Yeah, uh, had some tots. Mm. Gotta get those tots in. Keep trying to go to this SAE bowl place, but there's just never any time in the morning. Mm. And uh, yeah, so my quest for an SAE bowl <laughs> continues. Uh, JWI Soulsby is asking if we got to see the skills tree in Cyberpunk. We didn't really. We did. See, they, we yeah. did see a bit yeah. of it, but it was big yeah. and difficult to pass. I think what was interesting was like about it screen. is that the. Um, so it's arranged around a circle. They don't have a class system. It's sort of like a more of a playstyle thing, and you're not committed to a particular like uh, strongman route or mm. netrunner or whatever the whatever the name of the classes are in, in Cyberpunk, the tabletop game. Yeah. Um, but different uh, trees, different mm. branches were named different things. So that one of them was like body, one of them was cool. Yeah. But what I thought was unexpected was that if you look down the cool branch, it said things like um, sniper rifles. <laughs> <laughs> sniper rifles, sniper are, rifles are, are quite cool. cool. Yeah. But then down the um, 
down the body route yeah. that I think there were things you would expect to find there like like physical strength maybe yeah, yeah. but there was also a different weapon and maybe it was shotgun or something like that so it wasn't entirely the skill tree that I would have expected yeah. but I think that yeah. that sort of links up with their approach where we're not going to lock you into a particular kind of tropey class yeah. if you want to do hacking then you'll put some points into kind of hacking related things yeah. but you're not then just going to be boxed into a net runner. But yeah, I thought the tree was really interesting. It wasn't a tree, it was like arranged around a circle. Yeah. Which I think is a visual way of, of signalling that... It's more open Yeah, you're not like going rigid. down yeah. a path and then being stuck funny, on that yeah. path, yeah. I like the idea that you're not cool enough to use a sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> you're like trying to aim it and you just fumble But we knew it. about, we knew <laughs> about that cool stat from last year. Yeah. We were yeah. speculating, oh, does it mean like your, your credibility or reputation but yeah. I, I don't think it does actually although well, credibility street cred, cred is a thing as well mm. and that is like its own kind of experience well it was nice seeing the character thing, creator yeah. and, and yeah. you had you could you know obviously pick different attributes and stuff you had like strength and intelligence and the cool thing was interesting but yeah it's going to be really interesting to see how that stat affects the world around you must have because what one thing you can do is you pick an archetype at the start as well so there's the nomads yes. who are the like kind of it's like your story. Story. Yeah, exactly. yeah so there's like the kind of mad max style people and then from there's the this, junkyards and scavengers like, yeah, yeah, yeah. corporate kids. people who left behind like a career in the city yeah and like street kids who are like street wise and they know all the different gangs and stuff but and it unlocks different yeah dialogue. different dialogue yeah. options throughout the game depending on which like archetype you belong to so um yeah that a lot of dialogue options actually i was mm. that's it really struck me that every conversation we we're having had like five or six different responses yeah which is great i mean it must be a nightmare to write it all yeah. but, um, well that's one of those things where the proof is in the pudding yeah because yeah. uh, when someone else is playing the game for you and you go through it once mm. you don't know how differently yes. each dialogue option will actually Absolutely. impact some response. of it will be flavour. Yeah, exactly. Of course, of course. And some of it is about the... Um, and I, I don't mean to do down the the effective illusion of choice. Mm, yeah. Like, we know games can't have infinite branching story paths. It just... If it's written well and if it's done well, yeah. then it gives you the impression that what you've said and what you've chosen... You're sort of role-playing, aren't you, yeah, exactly, exactly, mm. exactly. Um, I think that's... Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, it's, it's fascinating. Um, yeah. Keanu so Reeves, meanwhile, pops up like in your sort of peripheral yeah. vision while you're chatting to... He's hanging out, smoking a virtual uh, cigar. An enforcer or something, yeah. and he's it's saying sort of salty on things, things he's like about a, what you're doing. like yeah. a sort of Shakespearean narrator character who just sort of okay. hangs around... Like, he's like reference. Puck or something. He just sort of hangs around on the side of the stage like commenting on what's going on. Yeah. Well, there's a bit where you're looking in a mirror and like customising your outfit, and then you come out of that menu and he's like... No one gives a rat's dick about what you look like, yeah. alright? Yeah, Get on did, with the game. He did say you know, rat's dick. did say, Keanu Reeves did say that. So. Oh, God. The thing that Keanu yeah. Reeves has said now. I, yeah. Uh, I'm <laughs> glad I've never seen one, so I'm not visualising it. Uh, but the, um, the the other one I liked was the one where, mm. at one point you were like, you asked him, like, should, should, I, should, I, should I do this? It feels like it might be a trap. He's like, yeah, uh, whatever, just do it. I <laughs> just do it, Jesus. You yes. should be more more invested in my safety, yeah. Jamie Silverhand, because you live in my neck. <laughs> in my neck. So, <laughs> yeah, watch out. Um, Josh Pierini says, Hey guys, super interested in Vampire Bloodlines 2. Are you more excited after the reveal or less excited? Oh God. Hopefully you're getting some rest between everything. A video at 12am and have a great rest of your trip. Yeah, we've been putting videos up. We've been sort of trying to space videos out um, as time's gone on, so hopefully they've, they've appeared at a time that is convenient for you as mm. well. Um, I think we're more excited about well, not, Definitely or, more. or as excited yeah. about uh, Vampire Bloodlines 2 it, I, I was we pleasantly frustrated yeah. by the series of clan reveals because they were like little animatics mm. and I was like give me the gameplay yeah. <laughs> and we just had a really extended gameplay demo mm -hmm. and we've got footage actually so keep an eye on the channel we'll, we'll yeah. have that gameplay to show you very soon mm. but we literally did that about an about hour an hour ago yeah. so we haven't you know haven't haven't been able to, to publish anything yet mm. but yeah more excited Looks um good. it's in very 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 safe hands um the and people we were talking to were uh, yeah they they know their onions for yeah, sure absolutely. they know their vampire bloodlines of onions yeah it's great we had a bit of a chat with uh, one of the writers Cara allison who um we know we've known since former games before. journalist yeah former games yeah. journalist um and uh yeah it's great just talking to uh someone who works on a game that you really care about and they're just making all the right noises about how it fits together and what the direction they're taking and all the things they're sort of thinking about so that was really great and um yeah it felt comf i was saying it felt comfortingly familiar even just some of the vo voice acting and the delivery just yeah. felt like the tone is yeah. bang on obviously it looks mm. really yeah, it looks really nice. good yeah. but in terms of like tone and that that kind of like slight 
kind of skewed humour. Mm. It's got that. We um, went into a, a nightclub. Uh, you've got to have a nightclub. Mm. And uh, and we saw a dance floor. And and almost before they could be like, ah, and, and there's Bloodline fans, you recognise this. And, and we're like, dance floor, dance, dance floor, dance. go and dance now. <laughs> Um, and of course, the dance floor the is. The dance is in there. The dance is the iconic. That was the one clip that Jana showed me. <laughs> the only thing I've shown Andy, because Andy wasn't in thing. there, was the iconic. I was like, oh, she's going to show me the, the best part of the demo. It was right? the best part of the great. demo. And the was demo the was great, but that was the best part. And yeah. apparently, the animator studied the original dance. And mo capped it. And mo capped it themselves. This so. is an artist's impression. Of it. it is a bit like. Uh, I think at one point. In a previous show of the week, one of you learned how to do the dance yeah. and did it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, there's a lot, Mike, there's a lot yeah. of like side arm waving. Very flaily. Um, yeah, random bits. We had a bit of chat with them after the demo and stuff. So stuff like uh, you, it's first person as a game, but like when you do the dance, you'll see your character. And there is now character customization, which there wasn't in the first game. So you'll be able to dress your vampire up as you see fit. The character customization in the first was like, do you want to be a, g a girl or, or a boy? Yeah, exactly. yeah and, your, and your appearance was fixed based, based on, on, your clan, yeah. on your clan. So the male Torridor was like, he was like a S red silk red haired red man hair. in a red silk shirt, which is a very distinctive look. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I'm um, here for it. But the, um, the demo was, was cool. Really, really excited about it. And, and yeah, I was nervous going in. I was nervous going in that it would look and feel kind of clunky, particularly after you've just seen Cyberpunk, which has just so much resource so, thrown at it. so polished. Yeah, well. exactly. Um, but it, it really stands up. And, and then, yeah, just nervous about, yeah, doing justice to one of my mm. favorite games of all time. And um, Yeah, I thought what was interesting is it's called Bloodline, so it's very much, to me, Bloodlines means clans, mm. because each clan is descended from a, like, a pro pro progenitor, what do they call it? Like yeah, a, like an antediluvian. Uh, yeah, sort of a early head vampire. vampire, head vampire. Mm. But um, in Bloodlines 2, you're not initially affiliated with any clan. You're sort of doing jobs for different factions, mm. but um, it's not until a bit later in the game that you affiliate, yourself yeah, affiliate with, with a clan, which I think is really interesting. Mm. Yeah, I, it should give you a bit more time to think about get used to it and think what about you are, it. Yeah. Yeah. What, were you, what character were you playing as in the demo? Uh, we, a thin blood. We were a thin blood, so they're sort of yeah, you, fledgling. Uh, uh, yeah, sort of type. fledgling brand. So just vampire. like just turned. You're a scrub vampire who may or may not survive like a whole year because yeah. you're very weak when mm. you're when you're young. Mm. But you have like a, a thi we were asked to choose a thin blood power, so you do have some vampiric powers yeah. as a thin blood, but none of the really like clan specific interesting stuff. Yeah, and um, I say you're weak. You're obviously so much much yeah. stronger than a human you, who you were wrecking up all the time. Yeah. But I think maybe for the pur purposes of the demo as well, they let us choose. A, a like a clan specific power just so we could see some of that stuff so we yeah. had we had some like Tremere like blood, blood magic. magic stuff going on which yeah. is like creating blood spikes to come out of the ground and skewer people yeah. or like cause them to throw up blood or yeah. like just blood everywhere basically explode them it like, has the blood physics yeah it's it's, it's <laughs> sloppy looking okay. yeah it looks wet and gross and it's 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 really nicely detailed uh, the characters look great there's some Nosferatu in there who look really really cool uh, I'm yeah very very excited excited to play more and excited to cut together some videos from the footage you've got because we like I said we played it as complete jerks and I think you're going to enjoy seeing exactly how to the seven jerkiest <laughs> yeah. things we did exactly yeah. why not uh, cool so uh, Cull Obsidian says uh, Cyberpunk looks like the ultimate game for me but FPS games give me motion sickness do any of you get it if so how much blur slash bobbing is that I don't get I, any no, motion sickness. I don't. I have heard of people getting it with the kind of the camera sway. Yeah. Uh, no. Sometimes pe it helps if people have the ability to change the field of view. Field of vision. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, that, you know, I'd hope that's an option in certainly the PC version, but quite often console mm. games have it now as well because I think they know mm. that affects people. So maybe tinkering with that. Also, I don't know if it's more pronounced if you're in a lot of action, but what I can say about Cyberpunk is they did say to us, you can go through it without killing anyone. So maybe, depending on your play style, you might be able to take it at a slower pace, which might mean less running around and maybe less motion mm. sickness, but that's the best I can offer, really. I, yeah, I think the notion of going through it without killing anyone will mean in a lot of places you'll still have to do the boss fight, but then at the end of the boss fight, yeah. you'll be given the option to Not spare to someone. someone. Yeah. So I don't think you'll get through the game without fighting anyone. Yeah, maybe but not. Yeah, yeah, you could... Uh, you could um, you could adjust your playstyle so you're doing a lot more hacking and yeah. a lot more chatting and a lot less running and gunning. I, perhaps, hopefully yeah. there's going to be a lot of sort of flexibility in that. But I, yeah, I guess it's the same with Vampire as well. It's like you won't be able to, you'll be able to do a lot of things to avoid conflict and things, but you won't be able to avoid it altogether. No, right? no. So, 
because um, there's you know those those AI designers have to have to get paid. The stuff um, of the yeah, game is, is as it is, ever was yeah. combat in it, a way. People yeah. are saying they can hear munching sounds, which I mean, no one's eating anything. No, is so, it me? Is it me moving around on the chair or something? Am I maybe. doing something bad? Or? We're dead. Well, no one is eating anything, so apologies munching for sounds. munching sounds That's if weird. you're getting that. But yeah, several people have said that. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Uh, about that. A lot of people saying, I feel snacky now, thanks, Luke Oh, slash is it like a crunchy but, sound? Yeah, like a crunching snack sound. Like I wonder if that's chips. an audio... Crunch, crunch, Some crunch. sort of audio bug thing. Possibly. Um, hmm, sorry about that. Um, I don't... Yeah, it's difficult for me to... to I've got a drink down it. here. Maybe my drink is making sounds. Well, I'm going to drop the, it down. Maybe it's the ice, maybe, in the drink? Maybe. Or, uh, is yeah. it like a clinky ice sound, maybe? Let us know. Is it intermittent? Is it Is constant? it gone now? Let me, Possibly let me know. Dane's coffee. Yeah, it might be Jane. Yeah, maybe Jane. It's coffee. Jane's ice, says Will Sawyer. Uh, uh, wow, yeah. I'm uh, oh, I'm impressed that the, our audio it's was picking, up. picking that up. Mm. Uh, Ruroni Ruri- ten twenty nine says, if you could get a cybernetic implant, what would you get? Keanu Reeves in my neck. Yeah, just the yeah. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Uh, no, I just um, a thing that tells you the Wi-Fi password for every Wi-Fi. Oh network. wow! That like, would be cool. useful. It's like a nice yeah. low-key yeah. superpower. Although, if I would you just ever like get a... good signal, I mean, it's yeah. basically got that. So. I'd have a hacking subroutine that meant every time I go to an elevator lobby, there was an elevator waiting for me. That would be. It great. would use like my geolocation and hack the, the the kind of programming of any any nearby elevator to against the orders and wishes of anyone in the lift or near the lift yeah. to make sure there was one waiting for me. Mm. And it's like low key, but it would be really useful. Oh, Sorry, I, just... I think it's because I've been staying in a hotel on quite <laughs> a high <laughs> a floor. Yeah. And Living yeah, it's been a real pain point is like. Can I just have that one, oh. for, like like in the Matrix, how they just download Kung Fu into their yeah. brains and stuff, can I have that? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. there's, um, there was a bit in the Bloodlines 2 uh, demo where you're doing a kind of like vampire foo. Oh, like, do you know yeah. that one move that was like you flip over do someone's flip head over, and then nice, yeah, nice. vampire feel? I'm but you don't it. do like a forward flip, you do a kind of sideways one with your legs going. Yeah, just a cool, yeah, kind mm. of spinning movement. It was a bit blade, wasn't it? But I guess it was. Um, I guess that's why I loved it so much. Rectus Rex wants to know when James's birthday is. Um, James? Oh, um, is it October? I. <laughs> oh, no. It's in the calendar, but out. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, we'll find out. We'll try and find out, Reckless Rex, and we will let you know so you can send James a card because that's what you want to do according to this message. Um, NATO Stellaris says hello. Hi. hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to talk about control. Okay. I'm going to talk about control Go because control I good. really enjoyed it. It's yeah. like a classic spooky remedy action uh, looking really nice. We were mm. playing on some very powerful PCs. Yes, with RTX, And the lighting was looking something rather, oh my God, there was rather ray tracing, shiny. Yeah, ray tracing all over the yeah. place. Frame yeah. rate for days. Uh, mm-hmm. Felt really good. Looked really good. And I just, I, I love that that particular remedy brand of spookiness. Mm. Yeah, it's you know that kind of Alan Wake vibe. And just the whole sl- feeling like a slightly weird dream mm. thing that they have going on. There was yeah. a, a bit where we had to go and talk to a janitor, yeah. and so we went weird, to the janitor's yeah. office, mm. and there was a big door with a poster of the janitor holding a mop. Yeah. And I opened the door and he was stood there in the in exact the same, the There's a sort of like winking twilight zone yeah. yeah. feel to it, which I think I really appreciate. It's not just trying to be weird or just trying to be mm. scary, but um, but kind of charming at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, just remedy a great um, Sam Lake was in our lift yesterday in our hotel. Speaking of lifts, um, yeah. yeah. We're, uh, Jane and I are in a different hotel to Mike, and all the mm. remedy guys are staying there. And we were like, hey, we're coming to see control. And he was like, I've already lost my voice. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why he wasn't there today. Yeah. Maybe he, he fully his lost voice. his voice. He's working too hard. Oh, oh. Uh, well, that was that was yeah. uh, a highlight. But yeah, the um, what did you think of the combat? Because you were playing. Um, combat was really good. Like I say, it felt great. It, you've got kind of telekinetic uh, powers to pick up and launch items across the across the uh, level. You played Quantum Break, which I didn't. So um, yeah. I think it's kind of akin to that. It kind of reminded me of. Um, the Force Unleashed a bit. Oh, yeah. You can yeah, pick yeah. things up and throw yeah. them at people. There's a bit of momentum is... to it. So when you, like, pick up, it's not like a... You know those really clunky telekinesis things where you pick just it up hold and it's, it's like hovering, a yeah, and it, yeah. it's moving around. Like it's, it's got a kind of momentum and a, mm-hmm. a sort of sweep to it. So it's, Yeah, I was, I was thinking about that when you said that, and it's, it's weird because I'm not sure what I'd compare it to, but it's very uh, intuitive. Mm. You feel like if telekinetic powers were a thing it would be like and that. Yeah, one day they will yeah. be you kind of pick it up and it would have there'd be a little bit of a delay and a little mm. bit of momentum as you kind of like whip yeah. it around yes yeah. so um, pleasing 
Yeah, uh, Volturn says Control seems like something Andy should play during Hello Stream. I don't know if it's like full on scary as much as it is just weird and unsettling. Yeah, but like, I think it would it would be a decent those, Halloween. There are all those match. kind of yeah, like, floating people floating in the yeah. But also, it comes out like in July. I want to say July is it July? Comes out uh, next month. Soon, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, I don't think I can wait to Halloween. August, yeah, 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 I don't think I can wait that long to play it. Yeah, it'd be, I think it'd be a good one to rattle through. It's mm. not like it's not like top top of my list this yeah. year, but it, I will definitely it'd be play like it. a fun think, romp. Like yeah, quite exactly. Break, yeah, yeah. Also, just, Bl- Bloodlines when that comes out next year, next year, right? Yep. And then when Cyberpunk comes out next year, they're going to be like hundred hour games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Remedy's uh, control is going to be what at most ten, 10 hours. Yeah, probably. If I had to guess, it's going to be something like that. So it's yeah. going to be a, d- a delightful, compact mm. experience. Yeah. Uh, Nom Nom Blur says two years as a Brit and the first live stream is at one a.m. <laughs> is this the first one you've caught? Well, if it is, oh, well, well done. Welcome. Thank you for staying up. Um, Brock Sisson says thanks for the reply on Twitter about Forza Lego, Mike. You're welcome. Hope you get to talk about it more often, even after the video you made. Well, it's coming out very, very soon. So. In fact, it's tomorrow, isn't it? So uh, yes, yeah. tomorrow. Forza Lego thing. So you'll be able to play it yeah. if you're interested. You How much does it cost? Uh, I don't know, but it's part of it's definitely part of the season pass and the kind of deluxe edition. I see. Um, I can't imagine it's super pricey. You don't know. Yeah. It's only like three cars, right? Like, three cars and yeah. a bit of a, a kind of Lego valley. It does look thing. fun. Yeah, I'll yeah. give you that. But yeah, it's not like a massive I'm, expansion. I right? was hoping there'd be a few more cars, but they are fun to play, and it's it's kind of really fun and silly to be smashing through Lego trees mm, and things mm. yeah you can see Mike playing it on the, the channel yeah it's, it's only, only, uh, only, like only four sort of four minute long yeah. demo but um, yeah it's, it's fun there was there were pirate ships there was a haunted forest it was great mm. uh, John Sharpland says not at all uh, any, any of the great news from today but there's a new Frozen 2 trailer out and it looks what? intense <laughs> please discuss briefly thank you I know Luke's seen it and was commenting oh, about man, it man I haven't seen it I'm um, excited he was comparing it to Ursula Le Guin stuff which sounds oh okay I've not fluted. read I've not read Ursula Le Guin no, I know apparently. she's a yeah, yeah. Uh, well-respected fantasy mm. author, and that's all I know Great. about that. You got something, Andy? Uh, no, just people oh. saying talk more about Control. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, my con- shall I say my concern about Control? All right, yeah. fine. Um, everything I've seen so far has been. I mean, obviously, the building is like a really interesting concept because mm. it's a sort of like a, a, a constantly changing kind of unreal space, a bit like the TARDIS, you know. Yeah. And, the oldest and, house. Yeah, the oldest house. It's called. It's which is a really interesting concept, and I'm like down with the fiction. Um, my only concern is that everything I've seen so far has been quite grey and corridory, mm. and I'm really hoping they use that that weirdness to make stuff that looks a bit more varied. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm hoping it'll be a bit more visually diverse than the stuff we've seen so far. Um, it's but I it's don't know. really tricky to say mm. because the 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 idea that it's set within a single building mm. is is um, is like the fictional premise, mm. but. But the building is a fantasy kind of space, yeah, yeah, and so there's no reason that they couldn't have any, you know, anything you could imagine in in mm. that space. In fact, in the demo, well, in the the mission we were playing, we fell through the floor and suddenly we were in an, imp- an impossible void, yeah. doing some platforming, and um, and I, I I can't see how you you're not in the fiction of the the, the oldest house at least you're not limited into the, the variety, yeah. but it would also be uh, like a convenient fictional layer to be like why everything does look mm. a little bit Similar, like yeah. themed and samey but yeah it's, it's, it's impossible to say like like any e3 demo you, you can you can extrapolate only so far yeah. i suppose like how much does this bit reflect the entire experience mm. um and like a, like a great movie that has a trailer that only tells you really what happens in the first third or so yeah could have could have something wildly different in the yeah, later yeah. stages you absolutely know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and there was also a bit at the end of the demo. They showed us a cutscene which was talking of the, about the main character being able to go into slides. From uh, it, it sounded like there was a, like photographic, yeah, slides. like photographic slides being able to like enter them and go to other places. like that episode of Red Dwarf. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> I mean, it was just like a, a cinematic that they threw in at the end, and they were like, "Well, cliffhanger, bye." Well, so, that, that I find that encouraging because that means those slides could be from different places and yeah, interesting flashbacks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that might that might be the variety I'm I'm kind of looking for. Yeah. Uh, Box says, "Hey everyone, no questions. Just want to say thank you for, for so much for all these streams. They've been such fun. I know you have to be exhausted. Thanks for all, thank you for all your work." Um, we're not too. I'm not feeling too bad. I'm at not the now, but in I, I estimate in two About hours I will be on. walking uh, yeah. while sleeping or mm. sleepwalking, as it's known. But thank you, Annika, and thank you for joining us for the live streams. It's been really fun to be able to, you know, with with E3 quite often 
by the time we've gotten a video out, it's it's a, a day or two after mm. what we've seen. Yeah. It's been really nice to be able to just come back from the show still enthused about what we've seen. Like like Jane was saying, we we only just saw Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines over an, just over an hour ago, mm. so we're still like super kind of buzzy from the show. Yeah, um, so there will be a nice. video about it. Yes, we will be making a video as well, but this is just a really nice way to kind of relay our, our, our sort of gut reaction and our, our first mm. thoughts about uh, yeah, what it's seen. Yeah, it's a new thing for us, mm. and uh, I think we're glad we did it because video is such a time-consuming mm. discipline yeah. um, that it's, it's hard to be responsive, mm-hmm. but then a live stream is, is the opposite of that in a way. Yeah. Like, it's not... Not yeah. quite as slick, not quite as polished. Uh, it's, um, in it's in my hotel room. Entirely unscripted and from yeah. Mike's hotel <laughs> room. But it does mean that we can talk to you about things we've we've literally just seen. And yeah, played. and also yeah. you guys can tell us what you want to hear and ask your questions and it allows us to kind yeah. of immediately re- refer. A uh, few back. people asking where Luke and Ellen are. Um, Luke is working on a video about Animal Crossing yep. right now and Ellen is working on a video about Minecraft World. Yes. I'm in that video uh, about first, but yes. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing and New mm. Horizons. Or Tom Nook's Fire Festival. <laughs> I love the Tom Nook's Fire Festival. Well, you're Fire stranded Festival. on a desert mm-hmm. island, and Tom Nook's like, you, you can't even have a tent. Oh, fine, you can have mm-hmm. a tent. And then you've got to build everything from, from scratch. Classic Tom Nook. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. I think we were talking about it. I think someone was talking about it on the live stream before, but it might finally be time for me to buy a Switch. When they bring out the like limited edition Animal Crossing, Animal edition. Crossing mm-hmm. themed Switch, and it's going to have... Um, Joy Cons made out of coconut shells or something wow, like that. That'd be something, amazing, actually. something, yeah, island themed, and it comes mm. with like a floral crown or something. I'm, I'm, I'm really here for it. Wow, there's some real traffic going on outside. Wow, it's it's hello Angeles everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You see a helicopter hey, flying past the window. Oh, it's an, a- it's an ambulance. That's why. There it's, you go. It's just an ambulance. Live. FYI. This is like we do a traffic report as well for downtown LA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Steer clear. The five's real backed up. <laughs> Figueroa, pretty, <laughs> pretty busy right now. Um, oh, hello. Yeah, we That's because you. of all the skyscrapers, like the sound really yeah, carries, carries up and, rebounds and out in uh, in LA for uh, sure. UT Phoenix says, uh, "Just want to say thanks for being great. Your videos always make my day better." Hashtag Fresh Mems. You are oh, welcome. Thank thanks you. for joining us. Uh, Garrett Williams. Nice to say. Garrett Williams says, uh, "When me and my girlfriend saw the reveal for Lego Cars in Forza, we both got hyped." Then thought about just how excited Mike would be. So just how excited is Mike and everyone else for that matter? Yeah, really excited. I mean, it was great to to play it and. Um, I really, really liked the Hot Wheels expansion that they did for um, Forza Horizon 3, mm. and it's very much a similar sort of thing, you know, a really silly world. I love that that Haunted Forest is hilarious with all the Lego ghosts. Yeah, like, floating all, around. Um, glow in the dark ghosts. Because it's just so nonsensical. Um, yeah. And uh, it's always, I think it's always good when Forza lets its hair, hair down a bit. I think it can be, certainly before Horizon was uh, came on the scene, it, it could kind of have been accused of being a bit sterile mm. and a bit like, you know, um, it's a simulation and, and it didn't, never really kind of enjoyed itself but i think they've started to chill out a bit and um yeah uh i don't know but i suspect maybe the fan reaction from certain quarters hasn't been entirely positive for a yeah. lego yeah expansion not a lego expansion lego dlc yeah i think some of the real again like the real serious car people are like why have i got a giant lego car but yeah there was a more it, con- there it doesn't was a- re- delete the other cars no absolutely <laughs> yeah and you can actually drive the regular cars in the lego world and, and vice versa as far as i know so it's a bit of fun. It's a bit yeah. of fun. Mm. And, and there was a more conventional DLC pack before it. So. Yes, I was going to say. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like, Fortune not necessarily with just one or the other, yeah. I suppose. We've had a few people in the comments asking who we think won E3. I think Keanu Reeves and Keanu Reeves won Ikumi it. Nakamura. Yeah, I mean, we all won E3. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Ikumi Nakamura was the, um, the developer Ghost on stage Wire. for Ghostwire Tokyo. Mm. She and was great. Uh, she was awesome. Like, uh, so charming, yeah. so and she's eloquent, the, she's such a great Shinji performance. Mikami. Yeah, she's Shinji Nakami's, like, protege. Yeah. And it's really kind of cool and heartwarming to see him come up on stage and then introduce her, yeah. and then she introduces the game. And she's like uh, a living anime character. She was so animated and, like, you know, she kind of like jumps off the stage. It's brilliant. confidence yeah. and charisma to be speaking on stage to literally hundreds. I mean... Thousands of people because it's all being live streamed yeah. in your second language, yeah. um, and to be that and, and for your first time for your like you know for your for your in your first time in that role, uh, yeah, she, yeah. She's my new hero. I love when she was awesome. like spooky. spooky. <laughs> yeah, so charming. It's great. I love it. We haven't yeah. had a chance to play that game yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. is it even here? No, it's, it's not. No, but right. like I think it's I love Tango game. Tango game. It was, game it was one of those. Mikami stuff. 
it was one of those uh, cinematic trailers of which we saw so many. Mm. But among those cinematic trailers, it's one of the ones I'm, you know, I'm most yeah. buzzed mm. for. Oh, wait, Cypress, uh, Cypress Isles? Is that an I or an L? I can't tell. It says, do we have an update on Oxventure? We do. We have the footage now. We've secured the footage. We secured I got the bag. an email overnight. Yes. It said the footage is arriving. It exists. Yep. Um, it's, it still exists. So good news, everyone. So John will be editing that. It'll happen. Um, and we, you will see it in all its glory. Yeah. Uh, lots of exciting things happened in that episode. There's a I teeny think. tiny clip of it. I don't know if you saw in show of the week, uh, mm. just before E3. There was a little clip of it because that footage is from the kind of second camera shot. So yeah. if you want to, if you want a teaser of, uh, of four or five seconds, yeah. <laughs> there you, there you go. You check out the there new Corazon costume. Oh, here we go. Oh, you do. Yeah. Uh, Owen Rice, this is very cool. Hello from Utah. I'm watching while getting my first video game tattoo. Oh, okay. I'm what getting face. Whoa. I'm getting face arm tattoo from oh, Mirror's Edge, inspired by one. your videos. Yeah. That's. That's how you said you would have got. I I felt like I said uh, I said the Mass Effect oh, Renegade right. Paragon mm, yeah. one, but well, I think you mentioned it as like a. Possible, I think at one point yeah. I have mentioned because it it's extremely cool and. I, th- I feel like I might have said, and if I didn't say it's what I'm thinking, mm. that uh, I like the idea of one like really like full commitment, large scale tattoo. Oh, tattoo yeah. And like Faith's tattoo is, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's like a kind of circuit, like abstract yeah, circuit, circuit style diagram thing, yeah. Yeah. all down one arm. And I, I really like the idea of getting like, just like one like full commitment tattoo, yeah. like one big sleeve. Although, you know, a lot of people get sleeves done in, in parts and actually they're made of a lot of different elements, mm. but something big. And like, yeah, it's I very, like very stark that. as well. It's like yeah. black and, and, you know. Yeah, I like those kind of like graphical tattoos yeah. where it's, colors are, you know, I, I love spectacular color, but I yeah. do like the idea of something just kind of cool and monochrome. Yeah, yeah. you'd be cyberpunk ready, wouldn't you as well? I would, I would. Uh, for cyberpunk, you should get one of those UV tattoos though. So like, under oh, black amazing, light, yeah. kind you of get like, like the fa- you know the face yeah. wiring that they have. In the- yeah, oh, face oh. tattoo is a new level of, of commitment. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alex Jane says, from just what you're saying, it sounds amazing. I assume that's either referring to Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines or. Cyberpunk. Or Control, even. Um, I mean, or even Control. But I, it was a good day. Like All, all three mm. were impressive in their own way. Strong games, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Will Sawyer's asked about five times now what the oh. shoulder camera rig we use to film videos when we're outside is, so I feel like we should let him know. Oh, it's like a really super cheap one. <laughs> um, it's like, I think it like costs £30 or oh, something. Oh, the shoulder mount? Yeah. yeah. It's like a, it's a sort of, it has a kind of a bit that goes over the shoulder there and then like a kind of, you can separate it out and wedge it against your chest. And then it just comes out with a little um, screw for putting mm. the camera on. Um, it's super affordable. Like they're really cheap on Amazon. Uh, and I've had one and it broke, but it was until it broke, it was fine, and it was just affordable enough that I was fine with it breaking. So I've got another one. And um, we don't always, or even usually, film with the kind of camera we're using at the moment. But it is just like a, a little camera. Yeah, and I feel like it's the G seven X. Yeah, the added stability of having a shoulder mount when you've got something so light. Yeah, yeah. Is is I useful. think this, I think yeah. the stuff we shot looked better than it it did when we were using a proper DSLR like in, yeah. in previous years so I think it looks good uh, obviously this, yeah. we don't have John and James with us they no. were unavailable so they would, have, the they would have probably brought a more impressive camera but I and really it would have liked... looked even better yeah. but I think we, we found a, a good solution yeah, and uh, on our side is the light in Los Angeles yeah, which, which is, is incredible. really Makes really good great. very flattering they should really start some sort of film industry here. They could <laughs> yeah. really shoot some good-looking stuff. Someone, someone get that. Get that. <laughs> um, uh, Kate Lodge says, I love you guys. Uh, who's Atlas802 says, so what you're saying is Keanu Reeves is basically Al from Quantum Leap. And oh, eyes emoji. yeah, although um, he, w- yeah, he was a hologram, right? I don't know. I, I don't know. I I've remember. never watched Quantum, Quantum Leap. Oh, I've, what? Quantum Leap was good. I, oh, boy, he would say. <laughs> oh boy it was good um, yeah I've never seen it unfortunately okay well it was you, good did you, are you trying to say Quantum Break because I don't even know what you're describing you don't know, you've Quantum Leap I'm the, joking the... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to pretend that I'm too young to know what a Quantum what a Quantum Leap is I've never I've never heard of a Quantum Leap mm. no it's good is it the Scott Bio thing? Is that it's it? Scott Bakula? No, it's Scott Bio. Oh, which one's Scott, Scott Bio? Bio? Scott Bio was Chachi from Happy Days. Oh, oh no, okay. I've replaced him in my mind casting. Count, like. count Bakula. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, Isn't it a Bakula? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Not Bakula. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. What's clear is that none of us know anything about Quantum Leap. Uh, Duck and Stark. Hey guys, couldn't Hi. even catch the hey. live stream until now. Did cameraman James and producer John enjoy their presence? They did. 
Thank you so much. Duck and Sark brought us lots of gifts at PAX Lots of duck-themed gifts. And we did deliver uh, the duck-themed gifts yeah. to uh, John and James. With some explanation as to the duck themes. Yes. yes. Uh, Becca C says, excited to finally see the live stream live. You're all great. Love your takes on games and gaming. Very refreshing, down to earth and hilarious. Thank oh, you, Becca. Thank you. Oh, that's very thank you. I'm yeah. not fully confident that we're not just spouting nonsense. gibberish. Yeah. No, like we're going to watch this back and it's it's just us blah, 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 blah. saying non nonsense just saying words. Blue, 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 blue. Yeah. I feel, uh, I feel like that might be a thing. But yeah, thanks for joining us and happy to do a live stream at a time that has meant you were able to catch it. Yeah. We, you know, obviously we're normally on UK time, we're on Pacific now, we're streaming a bit earlier than we did yesterday and the day yeah. before, but um, yeah, yeah, thanks for joining us. There was one time and it was the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2 and Andy was streaming at midnight in the UK and we hit um, a convenient time for a whole new other audience. Yes. So some, that was nice. Yeah. It was, uh, the Australians were awake, and yeah. although sometimes we do get like the hardcore like viewer who is uh, awake at like four or five a.m. Mm. watching watching a live stream from Australia. Yeah. If that's you, thank you so much. Yeah, we really appreciate. Uh, I've been awake listening. at like two or three or four a.m. quite a lot over here. That the the, the way yeah. my jet lag expresses mm. itself is that the I sleep, sleep for like three or four hours, wake up at two or three a.m stay awake for an hour and then go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. You'd fall so asleep I quicker if you didn't sleep tonight. spend an hour on Instagram. Between yeah, but that's what I do when I wake up. It's like, well, I guess I'll just go on Instagram. Go on Instagram so if you're wondering why there's like Instagram posts to the official outside Xbox account at weird times, it's it's, just that that's jet lag. That's mm. jet lag expressing itself <laughs> through me. Yeah. Uh, Zantabar White says, I missed the first Bloodlines, but it sounds like something I would enjoy. Yes. How much of the lore do you think you need in order to enjoy it? This oh, is a good question none. for me because I didn't play. No, the no, because it... it the, the character in Bloodlines is an, a, sort of an, a new initiate to, yeah. into the world. So you could go into it like that character, like, mm. what the heck is going on? Why mm. do all these different vampires have different powers? I didn't know there was more yeah. than one kind of vampire. And, and the game is very much centered around introducing you to like different clans. And um, I think it's a really good introduction to the entire fictional world of, yeah. of Vampire the Masquerade. It's been 14 it, years since the first game, so they're yeah, going to have to do some on I think the trick would be le I think the trick would be less will I understand the fiction and more can I get along with a game that's that kind of old mm. um, and uh, and it's a game that I love but no one would ever say it's without its mechanical like kind of um, oh yeah the original uh, roughness got some weird, yeah. I weird suppose but, but it's well worth checking out it's oh, on God, Steam yeah. it's, it's on uh, isn't it on good old games and I think it's on yeah it's GOG. On GOG as well, uh, so. you can pick it up real cheap yeah. Yeah. and it's got Really great fan support. Like th there are updates, there are and, like, patches, updates and patches and, and all sorts. Yeah. Um, because it's it's quite beloved mm. in the in the right quarters. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm excited to get into it. A remaster yeah. would be amazing, but I, we don't need a remaster if there's Bloodlines two coming, and there is. So uh, I've lost my. Oh no! Here we go. Uh, Nikki knife stab. <laughs> Our cockney murderer. It's like um, Johnny Silverhand yeah, exactly. off of Cyberpunk. Uh, so far, the permadeath recruit anyone combo from Watch Dogs Legion is the most exciting concept I've seen this E3. Oh. What new gameplay concepts have you guys got? You guys excited uh, this year? Also, cool shirt, Jane. Oh, thank you. It's a wait. Hang on. Look, it so, goes all the way around. It's it's, it goes all the way up and down and around. It's actually a jumpsuit. Yeah. Uh, God, I love a jumpsuit. Talk to me. Talk to me later about jumpsuits. <laughs> the finest garment of all. You need a little badge to talk to me about. Talk to me about jumpsuits. They are so much fun to wear. Uh, but thank you, thank you for mm. the, the compliment. That's nice. And um, that's a really great point. Yeah. Like an actual system mm. that is new. Guiji is the one. Guiji is not a system. Yeah, he is. You turn into goo, and then you can go around I through bars so. and things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and over spikes. Right, Guiji is the future of gaming. <laughs> I think you make a really nice point that mm. that Watch Dogs. Um, while being uh, like it's a sequel and it's a franchise that we're familiar with, but to do something that's that's really quite daring, which is to not have a protagonist, yep. uh, and in, in place of a protagonist to have an entirely new system and permadeath and, and doing something that's so ambitious, which is to write lines and create backstory like yep. in a sort of procedural Everyone. way yeah. for everyone you see mm. and I, I can't wait to see that how that actually works that's absolutely yeah, yeah. this this e3 that's the thing that's like really mm. kind of blow my mind and and you know when you see something you're like i have no idea how they're going to make this mm. work and that, it, from what i've played it looks like yeah. they're making it work so because like every e3 you see a lot of stuff that's like iterative mm. it's like a, a really great version of something you've seen and and maybe especially so because we're on the cusp of a new generation yeah like is now the time you're going to see all the innovation probably mm. not i'm just saying that 
I think all games in future will have a Gooigi in them. <laughs> yes. Not, not like even the Goo version of the protagonist no, just of that game, but yeah, actually yeah. Nintendo licensed Goo Luigi character. Go yeah. uh, Carissa O'Sullivan says, here's something to support you guys. Keep up the excellent work. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Carissa. Uh, Stefan Yazvak says, hey, you all. Hope you guys are enjoying America. What was your first home game console? I got a Super Nintendo, but like really late. Okay. Like, late in the in Super Nintendo life cycle. My okay. friend had had one for ages and I loved it to bits. And you bugged you bugged Yeah, basically like nagged for two, on, three yeah. years and eventually I got a hold of one. I had so a, are we talking first games system. machine or specifically like console. a console? Console. console. Sega Master System I had. Sega Mega Drive then, yeah. You Sega people. But I played, I think I mostly played in the early days on like PCs and... Mm, yeah. Although, no, wait, not PC, uh, C64. Yeah. And then later yeah. a PC. And, and Atari ST. Yeah. Well, my dad was into games and so when the Master System came out in the UK he bought one for himself nice and you and were allowed to play on it occasionally yeah. when well, I was finished too young really <laughs> but I could hold it and yeah. wave the controller around uh, I associate my early like early days of, of playing games with like cover discs a lot yeah because yeah. we used to go and like we used to go to like computer fairs they're sort of like electronics themed jumble sales with Aww. my dad that's nice and they would have like boxes and boxes of like old games magazines mm. like PC gaming magazines that would come with the cover disc mm. so for like a few quid you could just buy a load of game demos yeah. because I was really little like you only really want to play the first level yeah. anyway that's or like games are only about an hour long back then yeah, anyway. like that was yeah. the glory days of shareware where you get like 20 levels of doom for free yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. brilliant uh, Station Kami donates very generously thank you very much for that um, oh, you shouldn't it, have uh, yeah uh, uh, very much says, appreciated though, yeah really. absolutely appreciated thank, thank you thank you um, uh, says here's some money for all your hard work during E3 it's a shame oh. I didn't see you while I was there oh. Ho hoping to find you guys because I had some candies to give you oh. as an aside for Mike did you get a chance to check out the next level racing setup that's there I didn't um, but we are at the show again tomorrow briefly yeah. um, I'm, I'm actually flying out I've got to get back to the UK um, tomorrow afternoon but we will be on the show floor mm catching Final Fantasy 7 remake and oh yeah like that. So yeah we'll be around I'll try and keep an eye out for it if I can yeah. uh, it sounds like some kind of motion simulate racing oh you love setup. that yeah, you love that stuff, stuff. you love a the... fancy expensive seat mm. to play a racing game in is yeah. that what it, it is like a physical yeah I think it will be yeah. if it's yeah. the next this next level racing setup mm. must be a kind It'll of shake is, it, is it called loose. next level racing or is it just it's next level uh, it's all capitalised okay, so, so next cool. level racing mm. yeah so I will definitely try to check that out it's going to wrestle you around <laughs> it's yeah. gonna punch you. In the <laughs> yeah, Mike's gonna be on a plane in like uh, yeah, 24, almost twenty four hours. Yeah, yeah. it's nearly time it's to crazy. check. We can check in online on the stream. No, oh, let's not do that. Right. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, we'll check Mike in. You can find out which seat he's gonna be in. Yeah, you guys can. We can like Twitch plays. We can choose your seat oh, in the. <laughs> yeah, you can let you can let, the, <laughs> you can let the stream audience choose which seat yeah. you're going to sit in. You know that when Twitch plays Pokemon, yeah. Yeah. it's this like Twitch such a good idea. checks in Mike it. online. <laughs> We're not doing Twitch this. selects which movies yeah. Mike has which, to watch. Which uh, like meal option you're going to have? It's like the lo the low salt uh, oh, vegan, vegan meal. Yeah. Oh, don't make me look yeah. miserable. <laughs> Um, 20 <laughs> 25th Hannah Booster says you guys are making me hyped about games that I didn't have too much interest in Aww. I have to leave since I'm working tonight for some overtime but thank you for all the work at E3 you're doing well that's cool like I mean I, we've really been quite selective this year about what we've gone to see but if if we're getting you excited about games you hadn't thought mm. to, to mm. play before that's cool like hopefully it, that's E3 doing yeah. its job I suppose Absolutely, and, yeah. and it's really um, it's gratifying high, high because it's a real I mean, it's hard work, but it's a real treat for us to be here. Mm. And I think sometimes our job, especially if there's a game that we're really excited about or that we are really looking forward to, the challenge is to kind of convey that to you as 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 uh, yeah as effectively as possible. And if, if, if you're excited, then that's great. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm and there's lots to be excited you. about. I mean, like, you know, yeah, if you yeah. go back and look at all these streams that we've done, we've had, you know, Xbox with the console announces, mm. we've had mm. Nintendo stuff going on. It's been it's been fun. Mm. Like, and I really, really enjoy uh, E3 is it just it kind of gets you like re-excited and re-energized for the for the next year or so. Yeah, things. yeah. And um, I uh, I've really appreciated this year how many of the games we've seen and I, I guess specifically the games we're 
uh, excited for have had release dates. Yes. Because uh, I can't. We know when they're coming. The number of times I've been to a blimmin' like EA conference and they're like, and there's a new Mass Effect coming, or here's mm. a new Dragon Age, and then there's like a little trailer and they're like, please look forward to this game at some point. Yeah, when it's like, done. Tell me when. But um, Cyberpunk's got a, a well, a release window. Bloodlines has yeah. a release mm-hmm. date. Controls coming out in the next month, and mm. so there's a lot of stuff that you can literally mark the date in your calendar. Yeah, like Lego Speed Champions Pack Force is coming out tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it's great. I, I, there's lots of stuff early 2020 because, yeah. and we think it's sort of because they're kind of clearing the deck for this, the end of this generation and the beginning of the yeah, next. Yeah, got is a deadline. <laughs> exciting in a, in a itself. In a, in a more abstract yeah. way, yeah. A lot yeah. of a uh, lot of comments for aisle seats, Mike. So just yeah, so I'll see. Is the the you winning can get up and wander seat? Around. Although think, it's a red eye flight, you might not want to be disturbed. Well, this is the thing because I I tend to just sleep a lot on planes, so sometimes I quite like to be sort of stuck in mm-hmm. like window or something, um, and then I never get people. But this is the kind of desperately polite people pleaser I am. I would rather sit in the aisle so that I could go to the bathroom whenever I want rather, rather, than be yeah. the person in the window yeah. and have, have to. to ask, yeah. If I was in the window and I wanted to go to the bathroom and people were asleep. I would probably just wait until my kidneys exploded. Have you ever uh, tried the acrobatic climb over the sleeping oh, God, oh, wow. That's the w- worst yeah. possible move. They wake up. They just up wake up. And you're, oh, you're, oh, you're like, straddling them. You slip and like elbow drop them. <laughs> oh, God. Throat. There's really no good way of getting it. I, I used to really love a window seat because you could like romantically look out of the window. And yeah. I, I love like looking um, at the land passing by below. Mm. But now I just love going to the bathroom without <laughs> having to disturb anyone. Yeah. 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 Also, because I drink a lot more water now on a plane because mm. the key the key to flying is staying, staying hydrated, hydrated yeah, Mike, so, Mike's yeah. superpower is the ability to fall asleep anywhere at that's any true time if in... you're Mike then window seat is actually a pretty yeah. good option I've slept through takeoff before numerous times that's a super I yeah, think that's a really nice time to fall asleep because yeah. maybe they haven't turned the movies on yet you're not allowed to be looking at your phone but and... the problem with it is, is if you fall asleep during takeoff yeah they normally do like a really noisy announcement once oh. in, the, in the air yeah and it's just like well, the loudest you're... thing on earth is is the announcement through your headphones if you're yeah. watching a movie <laughs> and it's like t- eight times louder yeah. than the actual movie yeah. <laughs> uh, random username for Chris says I've noticed you guys never seem to argue which is refreshing how hard is it to convey what for most is something they need to experience themselves good question mm. highlight of the trip safe return uh, highlight of the trip for me was Bloodlines because um, I've, the... been, I've been waiting 14 yeah. years Specifically, um, the guy dancing in yes, the goth club. That, yeah, yeah. Um, but I loved Keanu Reeves on this as well. Uh, Keanu Reeves on stage at the Xbox conference. That was, was a real highlight for yeah. me. Yeah. That was a, a, a real wow moment. Mm. Uh, before we really understood what the nature of his role in the game was, it was just sort of something like deliriously yeah. like delightful about yeah. this. seeing Keanu Reeves on stage at an Xbox conference. Yeah, and um, and and feeling the love back. I, I can't remember. Uh, who was saying it was someone from Microsoft, but um, apparently, like Phil Spencer said to like Keanu yeah, Reeves like, beforehand, brace yourself. This is not going to be like anything crowd. you've ever yeah. done before. And he's like, I'm an actor. Well, I don't yeah. know what he was like, yeah. but I'm imagining that he's like, well, I'm one of the world's most famous actors. I can handle this, but it's it must be such a weirdly different experience yeah, and crowd to, to mm. yeah, um, yeah. And then uh, he, I think he was a bit taken aback because he was sort of like. Guys, guys, I've got to get through this. Yeah. I've got to get through I'm, I'm just here to announce a release, release date, date for yeah, a video yeah. game. I thought this would be like a, guys, like a corporate out. gig or something. Yeah. You're all breathtaking. Oh, oh that was um, fun. I'm going to watch that again. That was fun. Stream. I think like you should have a, a moment, uh, like your best moment of E3 that is specifically about a, a game mm-hmm, and like yeah. and, and the game you're excited for and, and why it made you want that game. And then the other thing is like, what ridiculous nonsense thing yeah. happened that Because there is that always ridiculous nonsense yeah. in E3. It's always like... Quite often it's on stage at Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> the... Um, I think the bit in cyber, the Cyberpunk demo uh, where he got on a motorbike, put on some like synthwave, synthwave. music, mm. and then just drove that through the city awesome. in third person. That, that was, was nice. That was, that was great. That was nice. Uh, we're we're getting very close to the end actually. So what? Um, let's all right. Let's do some quick through. quick fire. Uh, so random username for Chris. Also, uh, it is quite hard to convey uh, stuff that we need to experience yourselves, but we do our best, and hopefully our videos have oh, helped, yes, right. helped give that stuff. Mm. Uh, Sleepy Susie says, "What would you do if you could hang with Keanu Reeves?" I think just hang just with hang him, out. have a beer, just a chat, you know. shoot the breeze. Yeah, I just, think just uh, even I think you could sit in silence with Keanu Reeves and not feel. Oh, like I bet just he's like, a really good like hang out in silence. I dude. think he probably gives off just a very calming mm. energy. Yeah, just just 
smell him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Emmanuel0924 says, love you guys. We love you too. Aww. Thank you. Um, Warrior Angel Girl uh, donates. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Uh, Farlander says, lots of great games at E3. People hyped up. In the shows you saw, any underrated games that should have got more attention? I did want to mention Journey to the Savage Planet. Oh, yeah. It's kind of nice an in- indie game. Mm. Uh, it's made by... Uh, Small team uh, led by one of the guys who did Assassin's Creed 3 and Far Cry 4, mm-hmm. both decent games. Um, and it, it's really nice. It's sort of like No Man's Sky, but more narrative based mm. and with proper objectives and stuff. So it's got that same kind of explorational feel, but it's a, a kind of curated experience. You're going around cataloging things and trying to build things, but it's also kind of funny. Uh, it's got some kind of comedy stuff mm. in there. Yeah. When you go back to your spaceship to do, you know, 3D print a grappling hook or whatever, there's a screen playing this sort of corporate like uh tv ads and things like that and it's 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 pretty great it's colorful mm. and crucially sometimes indie first person games are kind of clunky to play mm. uh, but this one felt really smooth it's really nice to just get around the planet and some really cute animals you can boot things around and there's all sorts of nonsense so okay. yeah when's that out uh it is early 2020 currently okay. scheduled for right. cool. Good. Um, it's gonna be busy like um early and spring 2020 yeah. absolutely yeah i think there's That's not good. actually a ton coming out of christmas this year or at least a ton announced it's, it's sort of there's a bit of stuff in summer and then a load of stuff like early 2020. So I feel about modern warfare. <laughs> that looks good. Like yeah, I, no, no, like, no, I'm not saying yeah, it won't be yeah. good, but it's like that's the you can set your set oh, yeah. your watch by it. That I, is coming out this this winter. Absolutely, yeah. and I think people are I think people are really ready for another kind of modern combat uh, modern warfare game yeah, after kind yeah. of World War Two yeah. and World War One and yeah. uh, Future and all that stuff. The trailer looks good, but actually it's um it's not like hands on as in like you can't play it here at E3, we, yeah, not we, on the show floor yeah, anyway, so yeah. this has been a rare E3 in that we haven't yeah. uh, gotten up at, you know, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning and gone to like a, a pre-show hands-on with Call, Call of Duty, Duty which yeah, is, yeah. I don't know, I feel weirdly, weirdly, strangely yeah. bereft about. Those, yeah, those are some of our most um, manic <laughs> videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the manic energy of playing yeah. Call of Duty in yeah, LA 9 at, at yeah. night, well, yeah, 8am 8, 8 perhaps. Do you remember that year that we went to play it um, before the show opened and we were so tired and there was a company selling coffee makers in the lobby and we signed up to their yeah. mailing list just to get a free, I gave, free I gave them my actual real yeah, personal too. details. That was, I was foolish. I got emails about coffee makers for three years until they went out. Yeah. <laughs> like, Captain Price at callofduty.com. Yes, I know, um, I know now. Yeah. Mark Anderson wants to know if we're going to be able to talk our way out of trouble in Cyberpunk and Vampire Fallout 1 style. Not Probably not exclusively. There will be combat that you'll have to do mm. in both those games, mm. from what we can tell. But there'll be a lot of situations where you can approach that combat in the way you choose, and there will be situations where you can talk your way out of trouble in mm. certain circumstances. I love that one of the things the demoist uh, developer was describing in the Bloodlines 2 demo was um, so it's a little bit more abstract and... Uh, there are five kinds of resonance, which mm. is like an energy that your victims, that the humans that you feed off of will have. And it's like delirium, desire, something, something, mm. something. And different humans have different amounts of those resonances. Yeah. And if you're playing, if you're playing a Toreador and you mm. want to seduce a lot of people, then maybe you'll be more drawn to the kind of person that's got mm-hmm. like desire resonance, which is going to lead you to like, um, hunt in a certain area yeah. I imagine mm-hmm. and it's, it wasn't really the focus of the demo we saw but it was like a, a new little kind of complicating wrinkle yeah. to the system of like feeding on humans yeah so there was, a, there was a sort of uh, we were in a kind of an area with a lot uh, like a sort of drugs den and mm. stuff so there were a lot of people on drugs and they all kind of had this delirium, sort of delirium yeah, resonance because yeah. they were all kind of out of it and then you acquire that resonance yeah. and then you acquire enough of it it's kind of like a secondary experience yes. uh, point system and it becomes <laughs> This is like a, a clot. <laughs> yeah. Enough resonance is a clot, and then you can use those clots to kind of Buy invest. New and, powers and things. Yeah, that was. But um, it does mean that even if you picked a clan that is completely different, so yes, you, you could be like a a Ventru who's the kind of classy sort of oh, the aristocratic. Class, yeah, the aristocratic. Yeah. Class. But then you could be collecting delirium stuff, and it will change the yeah. your abilities and the, and the things. Yeah. So I think there's gonna be a yeah. lot of like combining abilities and. and it's like a hybrid, uh, sort of hybrid system, class. Yeah. Also, because um. Clans sort of loosely relate to classes, mm. but they're much more kind of, a fi- it's a fictional layer as well. Yeah. So there's like the fictional layer of clans and certain things that they you associate with them, but then also like the mechanical stuff, which is, I want to seduce people. Yeah, yeah, that's basically how I Or drive people mad. All right, last, last yeah. few questions. Uh, 
uh, Lucio Magalas says, uh, did you meet Miyazaki? Uh, we did not meet Miyazaki. Sorry, We'd love yeah. to hear more about Elden Ring, though. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Victor Mark donates. Thank you. Tom Chapman, if you could reboot any dead franchise, what would you pick? Crikey. Dead franchise. You're going to have to come you... back to me on that one. That's such a big question yeah. for, for the last couple of minutes of a live stream. TIE Fighter. TIE Fighter. Yeah. Actually, yeah, the, the Star Wars flight games were all really, really cool. Yeah. Proper, proper I'd have to think game. about, like, yeah, a game you really loved and, and never mm. had a follow-up. Yeah. Maybe maybe one. we should do a discu- uh, discussion video. Oh, franchises you'd reboot. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, try and, we'll try and bring that to you. Mm. Uh, That's a great idea. Matt Holland, long-time fan, first live stream. Welcome. Thanks for all the cool videos and hope the jet lag isn't too horrible. We're just about over it and just before... We're You're about, about to, to go and, yeah. yeah, deal with it on the, um, other, the other way around. Yeah. Brock Sisson says, is this stream taking place earlier because of how giggly yesterday's got? Yes. Uh, no, <laughs> we've got... Uh, we've got very bits and bobs going on tonight, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. We, we've, we've got, got to get more over to go to and some do. Events. Yeah. Uh, Goldenberger says, "You guys are awesome. Hope to get to meet you one day. Do you have an indie title you're excited for? Mine's After Party. After Party. After cool. Party. Oh, yeah. Supermarket Shriek was fun. Oh yeah, keep Twelve minutes I, um, yeah. from 12 the minutes Bethesda there. show. Mm. Um, I don't know if it's it's here like Playable. itself or if it was yeah. just that thing on stage. But um, I'm I'm interested. It's by the in Edith Finch people. So. Was yeah. by um." Was it? It's by it's not by uh, Giant Sparrow, which is the Edith Finch people, but it's by Annapurna Interactive, which right. is kind of like the umbrella the umbrella, uh, sort of okay, like yeah. label sort of thing. So, but yeah, it comes from the same stable, so I have mm. full faith that it'll be something interesting and in, in, in the same way, something striking. Yeah, yeah, uh, nearly there. Will you ever come to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? I'd love to meet you all. Ooh. I'd love to get to Pittsburgh. I um, would. Uh, maybe if they do a show there, or you know, you can persuade the show to, to get them to yeah. you know, get us. To well, yeah, we just need the slightest excuse, mm. and yeah. we'll make um, it happen. Wolverine Fur donates. Thank you very much. Daniel Simmons, Mike, what card do you own? And you should have a brief check of Mighty Car Mods for some great car tie-ins. Uh, I will. I have an Alpina D3, which is a type of BMW, and also a Ginetta G40, which is a type of racing car. Uh, Tiny 1985 is a new member. Joan Real Woman, for the record, Corazon's new costume is Stella. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, and then, then that must be judged what? from the... The clip in show of the week. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Awesome unless, photos. Unless Joan was in the audience. Yeah, maybe, him, maybe, actually. Yeah, yeah, maybe. All right, we really must go. Yes. But uh, thank you so much for joining us. Sorry if we didn't get to your question. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, but thank you for all the questions throughout uh, all of our E3 live streams. It's been real fun like answering them all for you and uh, sharing our excitement for the stuff we've seen. Yeah, we there hope are... it was like somewhat coherent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully, yeah, not too much. Oh, yeah, Let's watch this back tomorrow and all right. see if we made see any sense. if we sense. were just blathering. And... Um, keep an eye out for videos uh, from all the stuff we've seen. We're yeah. seeing more stuff tomorrow. So um, there will be some stuff sort of in the weeks to come as well from things we've seen yeah. at E3. Yeah. So there's lots more to come. If you haven't subscribed already and if you've accidentally stumbled across this please do subscribe oh yeah um, and also hit the bell because a lot of people i've noticed on twitter are like yeah. i didn't get notifications yeah. for a number of these videos but if you if you press on the bell you can actually manually tell youtube like listen up grab youtube by the lapels yeah. and say send me notifications yeah. that would be cool mike's gonna play final fantasy 7 tomorrow so yeah, i'm so uh, excited about that as well yeah. that's the that's the holy trinity it's like cyberpunk uh, Vampire Bloodlines and Final Fantasy Remake are the RPG holy trinity for me. Yeah. I'm so excited. And in 2020, I'm basically going to shut the door to my bedroom <laughs> and not come out until I've completed all of those 80-hour yeah. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you've got anything to say, Mike, get <laughs> we, it in yeah, before yeah, then. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's been a good E3 for RPGs. Yeah, yes, yeah. definitely. So who's ready for an abrupt ending? Yeah, go on then. I am going, going to... I'm going to hit the button. Okay, All right, I'm going to keep talking. In the Don't worry this. about it. We're going to go yeah. away. But, but it will fine. be back. And I'll tell you for why. Uh, yeah, because look. E3 lives in the heart. <laughs>